The most basic of pagan practices is the control of human population to have a perfect balance between man and nature. The goal is to bring the population down to 500 million, which is over a 90% reduction in humanity. Now that we have abandoned everything we've been trained to think prior to this moment, we can start looking at the world for what it is, instead of what people tell us it is. Open your eyes today as if you've never seen the world before, and you will begin to notice that the goal of population reduction is everywhere around us. And let me assure you that absolutely nothing that I'm going to tell you is exaggerated, is interpolated, or is imagined. Everything I'm going to tell you is documented. He who controls food controls the world. Well, they said in 1962, we're going to work toward total global implementation of Codex Alimentarius on December 31st, 2009. They were sort of guidelines. Now, Codex Alimentarius Commission is administered by the World Health Organization, WHO, and the FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization. They fund Codex and they run it at the request of the UN. So they're mommy and daddy to Codex Alimentarius. In 1994, Codex, with no notice here in this country whatsoever, declared nutrients, put on your intellectual seatbelts, declared nutrients to be toxins. They're poisons. Under Codex, every dairy cow on the planet must be treated with Monsanto's recombinant bovine growth hormone. Furthermore, under Codex, every animal used for food on the planet must be treated with subclinical antibiotics and must be treated with exogenous growth hormones. If you do the numbers in the WHO FAO projections, the epidemiological projections, they estimate, not I, that just the vitamin and mineral guideline alone when it goes into global implementation on December 31st, 2009, will result in a minimum of three billion, that's B, bad, big, billion deaths. One billion through simple starvation. Those folks who die are not particularly economically successful from the point of view of the corporations, but the next two billion, they will die from the preventable diseases of undernutrition. Who will live? Probably those people who are wealthy enough and powerful enough to have their own pushers of clean food and nutrients. So we need your help because the United States leadership is what's going to literally save the population of the planet. The UN has put out dozens of public documents where they're calling for an 80% world population reduction. In fact, at the Beijing Women's Conference, the World Conference, back in 1997, the head of the UN food program said, we will use food as a weapon against the people. Sixty-six percent of the United States residents' public water is fluoridated. It is known to have tremendous effects on bone cancer, joint problems, bone weakness, lowered estrogen and testosterone levels, and dental fluorosis, which is yellowing of the teeth and pitting in the enamel. Wouldn't it make more sense to enhance public water with vitamins which are meant to be ingested to promote overall health? Rather than putting such a toxic chemical in our water with a bogus explanation that it will improve our dental health. We now know that fluoride causes more dental problems than it solves. Something doesn't seem right about this. 
Do you honestly believe that these companies care deeply enough for the people to spend large amounts of their own money to fluoridate public water when the people already purchased their own toothpaste? But there's a difference between toothpaste and drinking water. We don't ingest toothpaste. If you go to any hardware store and look at any rat poison product, you will only find one ingredient, sodium fluoride. It is the most toxic ionic molecule outside of potassium dichromate. Now Danon, along with other companies, have begun fluoridating bottled water. It is becoming increasingly difficult to get away from. And the fact that fluoride is also used in many prescription antidepressants shows that it eliminates aggression and motivation in people. Fluoride, to my knowledge as a physician, has absolutely no biological benefit whatsoever. Uh, but one of the significant things is that the, the Russians uh, carried out all sorts of experiments on the uh, people living in the Gulag. One of them, of course, was to fluoridate the water. Why? You fluoridate the water, why people are not uh, as aggressive as they ordinarily would be. In fact, what is the active ingredient in Prozac that is so widely distributed in America today? Well, it's a fluoride compound. And now, we are finding that public water, nationwide, is showing up with arsenic, lead, cadmium, and thermonium, which is a radioactive form of lead. Cancer, lowered sex drive, birth defects, sedation, and brain defects? Does this not sound like a wonder drug for anyone aiming to control a population? It's, it's quite astonishing, Paul, uh, the degree to which environmentalists have not been educated about fluoride. You know, people have an unconscious trust in their doctor or their dentist, and if you can persuade doctors and dentists that fluoride is safe and good, then you're, you're, you're uh, able to reach the rest of the nation. People believe they're doctors and dentists, and that was a way of promoting fluoride for Bernays. Fluoride was killing their cattle, destroying their crops. A fluoride given to rats had produced bone cancer and liver cancer, and that those results had been doctored to make it look as though fluoride hadn't caused as much cancer. The pattern that we saw, it typically is what we see with other neurotoxic agents that are well known to cause a hypoactivity or uh, a memory problem or an IQ problem. When I first presented the results of these studies, um, one of the uh, individuals sitting and listening to the results, he says, do you have any idea what you're saying? And he says, you're telling us that we're reducing the IQ of children. And basically I said, yes. Aspartame. The artificial sweetener found in almost every low sugar or sugar free product on the market. First of all, aspartame is made up of three things methanol, which of course is what produces blindness, uh, aspartic acid, and phenylalanine. These are all poisons. Aspartic acid, of course, produces brain lesions. Uh, this was known back in the early 1970s. Methanol produces blindness. Phenylalanine is what you see uh, certain in the brain, and in high doses, it produces trauma. We're not making this all up. The FDA did publish. Back in, um, I think it was in the 80s, they did publish the 92 potential side effects of aspartame. And they do, you know, these side effects are quite, you know, are extremely serious. Things like dizziness, uh, problems with balance, uh, abdominal pain and cramps, changes in vision, seizures and convulsions, etc., uh, etc. Et so the nervous system seems to be one of the areas that's most affected. So we see people have difficulty thinking. Uh, they feel like they're walking around in a cloud or a fog. Yet despite all of these harmful effects, Donald Rumsfeld pushed it out into the stores in over 5,000 products when he was CEO of Searly, the company that manufactured aspartame.